Good morning, folks. Shut down, shmut down. Essential operations continue like the NDBC and tsunami monitoring. Had a minor deviation not far from my favorite buoy. Many NOAA sites are shut down, but there are way more up than I expected. Weather.gov and a number of the NOAA tools are available, along with the official Stormwatch predictions, or Snowwatch out west. They've beaten the Weather Channel's naming of winter storms to the punch. The wind map is still showing that convergence at the leading edge of that now weakening low that crested and caused major storms out west. Got another big one out to sea, and we've got tropical development here in the Gulf and Caribbean. Most powerful storm on Earth right now is heading right at the Korean Peninsula. By the end of the week, it'll slip in past Japan and China and make himself right at home. Since that high pressure moved on, storms in southeastern Australia have been a bit of a nightmare. It's luckily heading on now, and hopefully the next high gives you guys a break. RSOE actually took off a third extreme weather event from yesterday. Primary Euro low, regulating the storms here all the way from Portugal up past Ireland, dumping the rain. Front will carry the storm, so watch the pressure. Had yet another gamma burst last night from Celestial North Axis and Ursa Minor. Solar wind from last night's news video, showing the three-day plot with the predicted rise in speed signaling the arrival of the coronal hole stream. A weak one, only around 400 kilometers per second. This morning we see readings over 700 kilometers per second with density nudging 100 protons per cubic centimeter. That's a serious CME impact, an interplanetary shock, a day before the experts expected it. The filament left the sun a tad over two days before impact, half a day faster, and that might have been something that could have caused damage. As it is, we are left with a G2 magnetic storm and the aurora photographs across the planet, which are astounding, including many from places in the United States, so if it's still dark where you are, take a chance. Also a bit of good news as the radiation storm is almost over, appears to be fading. Earth is now sharing a magnetic connection to our star with Venus who looks amazing in the sunset sky, by the way. Central Southern Developer had gained good umbral size, but is still lacking all but the most minor magnetic complexing. There are two big guys coming in from the eastern limb. They'll merit classification in the next day or so. Flaring has been quiet. The Earth-facing coronal hole is slightly stronger this morning. Kind of tough to see, but it's there. Next coronal hole is that dark area on the left turning this way. Now the quake factors are only moderate right now, but the top three quakes of the day are noteworthy as foreshock precursors. Galapagos often signal an uptick to come in South or Central America. We've seen polar rumbles precede global upticks, and the Owen fracture zone, not normally an area of focus, but the slightest of warnings here preceded that deadly Pakistan quake which popped up an island, and the same fracture zone began erupting a submarine volcano in the Red Sea. The area in general is dancing a jig. Hopefully with only a moderate coronal hole on the disc we will see no big quakes. Helio Viewer is indeed a shutdown casualty, but you got the SDO page, Iswa, and Gong if you need them. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.30am Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.